Now here's the epoxy part I was telling you about. It's called epoxy skull. I mix it up and I gotta come in and smooth out and hide all any imperfection and then I have to blend a transition between the skin and the inner nostril. Uh, between the skin and the lip line and the mannequin and the little gaps you get under the eyes or the little tears in the nose and then clean up the tear duct. So, um, like I said, it's 50-50 and mix it together and it really is mighty clay. It, well, before it was mighty clay, it was this. So, it's kind of funny, it cracks me up when I see that stuff on TV. Now here I am when I was talking about the painting. See, here I'm coming in with my popcorn color. You see how hard I paint it. I like to, you know, get it everywhere. That way you don't miss any spots. I come in with my white. On this one I used four colors. Um, white, light brown, dark brown, and a black. And uh, see there's my deer skin, deer nose brown. And I build it, you know, it's light to dark, just like painting a painting, you know, and you layer your colors on. I'm not a professional, don't try this at home. It's the first time I've ever done a uh, PowerPoint like this. So here I'm in, now you can see the, the brown going on after the white. And then you can see the uh, darker brown there, yeah, there, and then the black. Now, after that's dry 24 hours, now I see I come in, like I said, with my my cloth and wipe everything off. And then I got to clean the eyes, get all that off, and then all this detail here I do with oil paint. Oh, I think good. Yeah, that's right, there we go. Um, put the gloss on the nose, and what the gloss does, this is where I only place I use lacquer. I use lacquer because when you put lacquer on the acrylic, it'll kind of melt it together, and that's what you want. You melt all the colors together, it gives it that soft appearance. And then just in case, I do a little roll like this, not to shine down a little bit. Then after I do all of that, I come in with my oil paint, and I try to paint back all the softness and the fleshiness in the corners of the eyes like you'd see on an, on an animal. And you can only do that by painting it by hand. Now most guys don't do that, they would stop after the basic um, whatever airbrush brushing they do, but to me that still looks too hard. It looks like too much makeup, I call it. So I like to soften the look. And then the last step is I'll put a little bit of good old fashioned bullseye shellac, you know, just like your grandpa used to use. And what that does is that'll melt, melt all this together and then give it just enough wetness to make it look like a live animal. And then you can see if you come up here after, if you can see all this detail, like all the little nose hairs, it's still white and all that. Because I use the acrylic, it just cleans right off of there. Like you use lacquer, it's just a nightmare, you know? And um, the tongue, everyone wants to know about the tongue and the teeth and all of that. These are made just like you make a dental impression. They're made off of actual teeth. They make a mold and then they uh, pour it out of resin, and uh, what I'm doing here is, I, I can't stand leaving anything like it is from the factory. I, I just can't handle that pink, purpley, whatever plastic color it is. So I take Windsor New number, whatever it is, three flesh, paint the tongue. And then I'll come in, and uh, this one I didn't quite uh, do finish detailing it yet. After I paint the flesh, then I'll put a wash of timber on it. And then that helps to make it look kind of more tonguey, if you will. I don't know. People think that's really funny. <laughs> it was really funny to me like the first couple times, but then now it's like an old joke. <laughs> but everyone goes right over to the tongues over on my bench. Wow, oh, look at the tongue. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. And there it is. I'm done. And um, now, I probably missed a few points because most of the time when I do my talks, like I said, I've never had a slideshow. A lot of times I'll just come up, have my props, and just go through the steps. So um, I'd like it if you guys have any questions um, or anything, please ask me because I like to talk about it. So.
Good job. Um, I wouldn't say no. no. Um, you mentioned boiling the skull. Now, uh, that's something that you do as a tax attorney. Correct. Yeah. Was, and and then what parts of the skull, if any, do you keep? Well, we just use what they, I call it the skull cap. Um, the way my uh, Mike Frazier is a sculptor that mentored me. The way he set up his mannequins, he's really like a, kind of a genius. He set it up so if we make two cuts on the skull cap, if you do it in the field, it basically goes right on to the uh, the mannequin. So we make a cut halfway between the antler bird and the eye organ. And then on the back of the skull, I call it the knuckle tendon, so I don't forget. It's really the knuckle tendon, see, that works. You do a word picture. There's a little widget right there where this tendon, uh, the, the spinal thingy ties in right there. And right in there is a little divot on every single animal. So you, you aim for that divot, it's about three eighths of an inch to a half inch down the back. Go straight across. So basically we just have a little cap. You don't, you don't really need as much as, as you think. And he also mentioned uh, dental impressions. Do you, do you make dental impressions of each animal that you taxi them? No, um, I don't have to anymore because there's so many jaw sets. What I do do of every animal is I keep detailed uh, chart when you come bring in and say you bring in a deer head i boy i just measure the whole thing every measurement you can think of in the head with ear 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 and i take sketches i make a sketch of it i take notes i know any any kind of imperfection or any any uh, unique thing that might be on on your animal so i can hopefully give you back a hundred percent what you brought in Okay, yeah, that stylized um, mannequins. God, I wish I had, you know, that's next time. You learn every time you do one of these. I don't I don't have one in my shop because they don't mount on them, but I could go through a whole thing of uh, just how wrong they are. And, uh, they're stylized, they're, they're, the neck angle's wrong, the head's too wide, they do it for a look. The amber block is too high in the head so that the tips them forward. Um, the shoulders are way too big. The brisket is just overbuilt. So it's like dramatized? Dramatized, way dramatized. The nostril thing is too wide. Uh, this measurement here, I mean, I tell them the deer, they look like carrots to me because they got this so wide here that it, it pulls down this down. The, I mean, if you know what you're looking at, it, to me, it hurts me to look at them. But most people, when a mouth's really clean and tight, you know, and, and finish well, you don't know what you're, you know, unless you really know the anatomy, you don't know. Is that like a new phenomenon? Yeah, it's been roughly uh, the last 15 years. And uh, what my, my teacher tried to do is we tried to assemble a team, an elite taxidermy team, to go to the competitions and try and bring it back um, to, to, to reality. And, uh, couldn't get anyone interested, you know? Because now the mannequin, there's politics and everything. Taxidermy, there's politics. The mannequin companies have took over the board of the NTA. So, you know, and this is a true story. My, my uh, another good friend of mine, a good sculptor, he got fired right in the middle of judging the nationals because he gave a guy a third, right? And they wanted the guy to get best of category. So they fired Joe and got a guy to give it best of category to mount on this new, new I call it the crocodile pig, this new Newcastle mannequin. The eyes are so high, you know, the neck is so straight, it looks like, I don't know, you know. It, it sounds like, um, like taxidermy on human growth. Animals. It is, it's, 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 it's basically, it's steroid, that's a good way to put it. You know, I kind of jump around a lot when I talk, I have a lot of passion for this, I love this, you know, and, um, um, but it's, it's simple, but it's complicated. And um, the best way a lot of times, like I said, to show you, it's, it's easier for me if I had one to show you and the line up too. And once you point it out, you can go, oh my God, because like if you break the neck on an animal and make it, because they're not 90 degrees, people think they're 90 degrees, they're not, it's 117 degrees. This angle is a maximum it can go.
go. So if you make it 90, um, it breaks the neck. And what that does is um, it gives you all this loose hair up here. And then this is the shoulders. Because the neck is in wrong, it takes the spine and attaches it down here instead of along here. And so when this, this skin can't come up, I mean, it creates all these problems. And, uh, now you've done a good job with this one. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Because, uh, like I said, This, this size, we figure about 25 hours. It's not too bad. A life-size bear can be between 40 and 80 hours, you know. But, um, but you can spend forever. I mean, as much as uh, my students in the back we talk about grooming the ducks, you know. And when you're doing it commercial, you just have to get it as good as you can and learn to do it. Learn your, it helps to know the anatomy because that way you can really get a nice tight job fast. But you could spend hours doing it uh, as much as you want, you know. So 